the last one is uh, on highway. And uh, of course, um, you have this urban, rural and uh, motorway, but of course what is really important uh, to, uh, for real dry emission is not just to have uh, a different driving pattern, but also just to consider that you may have uh, different environmental condition, uh, temperature for instance play a role, and also you have grade, maybe you have uh, to consider that you have vehicle with different load, so because may, you may drive just uh, you alone or you may drive with uh, people or with luggage. So, and also what is very important and plays uh, anyway a very important role is how you drive. So, and uh, I can show you here, uh, okay, what we did, uh, we really tried to um, with this test just to simulate different drivers. So people really that drive very smooth in the city traffic, they are on the left side of this scale and people that really drive aggressive, let's say where you have I know, a few more um, fry in front of you then you just uh, push the gas pedal to, 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 to the end and just stop again. And this uh, on the right side of this scale. So what you see also here is also the emission limit. So basically the Euro 6 emission limit uh, which is to perform a laboratory is 80 milligram per kilometer. And uh, of course in the legislation is also considered that uh, currently we can uh, achieve that uh, with a compliance factor, let's, let's say to let the vehicle to have a higher emission limit in real condition but we, what we show here is really that we are able today to be below the laboratory limit. So it means that this vehicle is able just to do what is the limit in, 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 of testing also to achieve that in real driving condition. So, our work currently is, of course, uh, just to improve uh, how robust is the system so that, but anyway, with this value, we can really show that what uh, the current technology on a diesel engine can reach. Yeah, hello, this is Olaf Mons speaking. I'm part of the project Automotive Strategy focusing on shuttles. Uh, you see here in Renningen our current shuttle research program um, where we focus basically on low speed automation applications. Uh, we have a, sh a, s a small team here in uh, Renningen that really focuses on software development, hardware integration and there's a core focus on research. Uh, we have a strong belief that there are multiple use cases globally um, where we need to introduce maybe in the future some low-speed automated solutions. Uh, what could that be? It's like here in Renning in the campus shuttle. Campus is also valid for universities, for example, or connecting point-to-point uh, -point, um, uh, locations like uh, railway stations with an university, um, as well as factories, um, um, ports, airports, that we have a belief that there are some use cases that make sense to be automated. Technically we are focusing on that uh, strongly, um, what can be done in a much easier way uh, to be automated um, and with regard to decisions nothing has been decided. Bosch internally is here, it's a, a pure R&D project that is led by our colleagues here in Rheinland. Artificial intelligence methods. And if you think about a driver assistance system, it is pretty much, it acts like, like a human. It acts like a, a cognitive system, you know. So first of all, you, you see, as a, as a human, you see the environment, right? So with, with your eyes. Same thing goes with driver assistance systems. They see the environment with video sensors, radar sensors, LiDAR sensors, and so forth. Then the next thing is the think. You try to understand the environment. And of course, you analyze the situation in which you're in, and you plan your own actions accordingly. And finally, you act. You execute the action that you have planned. And while, while the two things here, like the sensing and the acting, there are, there are very good methods already available that, that, that work. And you do not really necessarily need AI to do that, right? So for sensing, for example, you have uh, signal processing methods in order to like, really be good at that. And also for acting, you have like, control theory, you have control methods that also work very well. However, in these things here, like when it comes to thinking and to planning, I mean, also for a human, it's, it's pretty obvious. Uh, AI comes into place and you need AI in order to really become better. And this is what we're actually doing. 
So if you uh, please show the, the first video, it's the so-called pixel-wise semantic segmentation. And what you see here is uh, it's, uh, the co that the computer or the camera in this, in this uh, instance, it has learned how certain objects in the scene look like. For example, how a road looks like, and it's like in this, for visualization purpose, it's colored in red, right? How the curbstone looks like, how the sidewalk looks like, how cars looks like, and so forth. And it's individually colored. And so you can see that you, using this here, you can really understand the environment uh, in which you're in. And at Bosch, we combine these artificial intelligence methods using deep learning. We combine them with different, with classical method within a multi-path approach. So we have stereo measurement, for example, that, uh, that, that gives you a 3D measurement of the overall sea, so that has a scene, so that really has the measurement itself. And by this combination, together like new methods and traditional computer vision based methods, we're able to, um, to solve the, the, the most difficult problems in a very safe and very robust way. Um, you can see here in the next video one, one rather hard example where you have, um, uh, it, we, we call it any boundary detection. So this is a detection where you say current, current systems actually they only work when you, when you uh, think about lane keeping, right? To, 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 to stay on the lane. They only work when there are lane markers available. And the new systems that we will introduce in 2019, they also work in these scenarios here, right? Where you do not have a lane, but you still see or a lane marking, um, or the lane marking is hardly visible. They still work with it using, like additionally using this semantic segmentation that I showed you in the previous video. So much more safe, much more robust in all the scenarios. So this was the first example that we, that, that we talk about where we're using AI. Second example is when it comes to pedestrian protection. So this is very important for us because, because we're talking about uh, vulnerable road users here. So it's very important, for example, for emergency braking for pedestrians that um, uh, we, we can understand and we can anticipate what the pedestrian is about to do. And here it's really a, a matter of milliseconds that, that, that is, that, uh, that is uh, important. So we need to know, will a pedestrian, will, will, will a small girl, will, it, will, will she like cross the road, will she stand and whatever, because then we can like act, act like a, um, a millisecond earlier and, and save life with that. So actually, to summarize, again, we are using artificial intelligence also here. You see it here in the video. We analyze the movement of the, of the pedestrian. We can say, will he stop? Will he continue walk, uh, walking? And therefore improve the safety and the robustness of, of, our, of our actions that we, that, we, that we take. So to summarize, we use AI to improve our systems, to improve safety and robustness, and therefore well, uh, live with our, yeah, with our goal um, um, invented for life. Bosch. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Paul. Um, in case of any questions, I think we only have the time for one, but one we have. Yeah. <laughs> what about animals? Animals? Deers, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so, so, so we are working on that. Actually, animals are, are, are a pretty hard thing for, for detecting animals with this uh, classification-based method because there are so many different animals who all look differently. But what we can do is we can detect them very well with the stereo and structure for motion techniques because we can see that there's something in front of the road. Even if you cannot see, say, this is a bear or this is, I don't know, like a cat or whatever, you can still see there's an obstacle and the obstacle has a certain size. And this is where stereo estimation comes into place because there we are not only able to detect animals, but we are also to, uh, able to detect, like, for example, lost cargo, like small pieces that are there on the road where we also need to do something and cannot drive over it. So we can detect animals plus all other things, even though we cannot say what exactly it is, we can say there is something over which you cannot drive. My name is Harold Fisher. I um, joined uh, the Bosch Group 25 years ago, and now I'm working at Bosch Engineering in Upstadt located 30 kilometers in, uh, in the north of Stuttgart. There I'm responsible for all uh, sales activities around fuel cell systems. This car is a, a demonstrator project. Um, the goal is to show our engineering services around fuel cell systems. We bought this car uh, last year and dropped out the combustion, the diesel engine and the tank system, also the gearbox. And um, we implemented a Bosch electric machine, 130 kilowatt. And um, additionally to this electric machine, a small battery, 40 kilowatt hour. 
and we developed a special um, a fuel cell system. The fuel cell system has a power range of about 80 kilowatt and uh, this is a so-called a range extender concept. We charge while we uh, drive with the car, we charge the battery. So we are able to drive around about 400 to 500 kilometers uh, with this fuel cell system. Only with the battery um, we are able to drive around about 100 km and together with a range extender system with a, a 5 or 6 kg hydrogen you, uh, we have a range of around about yes, 500 km. We, we have two tanks inside with a 350 bar compressed hydrogen. hydrogen yes. Um, you can say now it's a standard in uh, bus or truck systems. You have around about uh, 350 bar uh, compressed hydrogen and in passenger car you have 700 uh, bar compressed uh, hydrogen. You have on the one side you have a, a stack. This stack is from um, um, a third party suppliers. We have no plan uh, to produce our own stack inside the Bosch group. But you see you have the tank system with a pressure reducer with a hydrogen injector you have a cooling system with a lot of pumps and um, temperature sensors press sensors on the air side you have um, an air mass flow meter electric uh, air compressor and uh, a lot of components uh, we have already in use in combustion engines mm -hmm. that's the big advantage against other companies who sells uh, fuel cell systems. We have a lot of components, yeah. off-the-shelf components yeah. already in, in use. Yeah. We develop, we are developing now um, a special um, air compressor, an oil-free air compressor. That's very important because oil uh, will destroy the stack, the membrane inside the stack. Yeah. We also have developed a special software to regulate the complete fuel cell system. We use, this is a, um, a standard uh, electronic control unit, million times proven in a uh, combustion engine, diesel and gasoline engine. And we special opt one a calibratable software to regulate and manage the complete fuel cell system. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to train one um, engineer at an OEM who is uh, well known in combustion engine after two or three weeks, he's able to calibrate a complete fuel cell system from Bosch.